is a cone. This is a cone. Hiya. Welcome back to the channel. So as you can see before us, we have a Citroen C1. And today in this video, we're going to do something in the pursuit of massive power. And it is... Whoa. Look at that. So as you can see, it is a cone air filter. Now there's more to it than that. It is an induction kit. So obviously it is going to fit. Um, but if we look at that, obviously with the amount of surface area that we've got there, that is going to add some massive, massive airflow. So first, anyway, before I even fit any of that, I need to get some, well, I need to get some tests of how it is now. I'm going to try and test how fast it is. I'm going to test the map pressure on the uh, manifold, see if it's actually scientifically doing anything. And I'm also going to test the sound, because obviously that's the most important. Right, let's go and see what it's like now. is lovely so let's do some actual comparisons so if we've got this here we can see that i've got live data showing with the map and the intake air temperature so i'm going to do that i'm going to do a pull in probably third gear see what that says see how fast that is and then when i fit the cone i'll do the same thing let's go and do that in fact a second gear pull but I'll just explain more what these mean so map that's the kilopascals in the inlet manifold so if that's around 100 which is what it'll be around that with the car not running depending on where you are in the country and your altitude and whatever but 100 kilopascals is one bar which is atmospheric pressure so we want that to be as close to 100 as possible it's never going to be above 100 unless we're in a boosted application so anything less than that is basically the restriction of the air filter and the intake air temperature i'm taking a measurement and because there are probably going to be people who say that that is just going to be a hot air intake because the filter is probably going to end up somewhere around here but this is the standard air intake i don't know if anyone's noticed this but there isn't really much of a cold air feed to that neither anyway let's get on with fitting the shitter first i need to carefully remove the original air box and panel filter and then this here this needs to come off yes and then i can only assume that that goes onto there somehow then this goes into there somehow and then that goes onto there uh, this isn't one of the fancy ram air ones but i have got part one of them which i'm going to test later on so i'm going to put this on anyway yes now, I'm not sure if this is actually right or wrong. I'm not even sure if there is a right or wrong because this is like an old made one that I bought off someone on one of the Facebook groups. But it seems to fit. It's not really good for topping up your oil where I've put it, but it, it could be manipulated to be better at that. But anyway, let's go and see. Well, let's go and make our scientific comparisons. <laughs> responsive but it could be a placebo effect but i don't think it is actually it does feel a little bit more responsive you know, let's go and test our uh, map and what have you during an acceleration test from that it actually appears to be slightly better in just about every way now this car or these cars are different to a lot of modern cars in that they don't really have any kind of sealed engine bay so on a lot of cars you're putting one of them on it is going to be a hot air intake but on these like i said the standard air intake is pretty much right above the exhaust um it's just into the engine bay 
Um, a lot of modern cars, like a BMW for instance, I say modern cars, that's less modern than this, but it has a cooled air feed or a sealed cooled air feed that comes to the front of the car, but this doesn't have that. So hot air intake, yeah, on a lot of cars it will be. Um, in fact, I used to have a Volvo T5 and I fitted a K&N 57i, something similar to this shit. And it were great for about 10 minutes and then I got stuck in traffic one day and it started playing up math sensor had failed and I did that about three or four times and it was when it got really hot took a math sensor out one day when I'd been stuck in traffic on a hot day and it actually melted the glue around the math sensor so yeah hotter intake it's not an unfeasible thing but on these cars it really isn't gonna matter anyway I did say that I had part of one of the rammer systems to have a look at and I'll try and put it on this but let's go and have a look at that anyway and here it is um, it's a piece of aluminium tube and it's a smaller diameter than what that is um, I was going to put it on and test it but to be honest I've only got this bit of it I haven't got the right filter for it and well, I haven't got the breather for it either I've only actually got it because that bit broke off so I welded it back on for someone and Mr Kiss actually has featured in other videos on this channel before um, that looks like it fits straight into the intake on the original intake boot and fastens onto the and then it just has a air filter on it. So it's a, it's a nice, neat, well, it's pretty nice and neat that compared to that one, to be honest with you. It is a nicer piece of kit, but I don't think it's going to make any difference or any more difference, even though this length is actually quite important when tuning, you know, when tuning this, but um, I don't think it's going to make any noticeable difference compared to that. So I'm not going to go to the effort of finding a filter for it and fucking about with it. So I think that's going to be it. I think that's all for this one. I will put the side-by-side -side comparisons of the acceleration test from before, and then I'll put them at the end. But yeah, I think that's it. Anyway, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all the usual shit, and I'll see you next time.